Can you work out the resultant force when two forces are at right angles? Well, if not, I'm here to help. And if you do know, see if you can solve the problem, follow along and see if you got it right at the end. So here we've got a plane. It's been acting on by two forces, one forwards and one at a right angle going down the screen. So the question would be, what's the resultant force on the plane? Well, there's two ways to solve this. We can do scale diagrams. I've got a separate video on that. So stop watching this video if you want to do scale diagrams. Go watch my video on scale diagrams, which was posted earlier on. What we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at the mathematical method of doing this because they are at right angles. We can use a bit of the GCSE math syllabus called Pythagoras theorem. So the first thing we need to do if we want to solve using Pythagoras theorem is we just need to reimagine how the forces are drawn. Now this is called the tip to tail method of drawing vectors and finding the resultant vector. The forces are vectors because they've got size and direction. So what you do is you keep one of the forces the same and then draw the other force on the end of it. So this is called tip to tail because the tip of the first force touches the tail of the second force. Now the resultant here is going to be from where you started your drawing to where you finished. So it's going to be along here. And when I add that in, this actually becomes the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle because these forces are at right angles. So hopefully you can remember from GCSE maths, the Pythagoras theorem is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where c squared is the hypotenuse. A and B are the other sides of the triangle. It doesn't matter which way around you've got those. So let's use it. So we're going to have 4,000 squared plus 3,000 squared. And that is going to give us C squared. So that's going to end up being 16 million plus 9 million is equal to C squared. So C squared is 25 million. Okay. Next thing we do is we're going to square root that. So C is going to be the square root of 25 million, which will give us 5,000 newtons. Now that gives us the size of the force, but it doesn't give us the direction. So we'll usually want to work out a direction. And for that, we're going to use trigonometry. So hopefully you're familiar with Sokotoa. So I'm going to work out the angle here using tan. So we're going to do the inverse tan to get back to the angle. And tan is toa, so it's opposite side, which is the 3,000 newtons over the adjacent side, which is the 4,000 newtons. So if you pop that into your calculator, make sure you press shift on your calculator before pressing tan so you get the inverse tan. And that is going to give you 37 degrees when you round it. So there we go. So our answer now is that the resultant force is 5,000 newtons and the angle, which I haven't drawn on here, so that angle is 37 degrees. If you wanted the other angle, then you'd inverse tan, but you'd put the forces the other way up because the opposite and adjacent would switch around. Hope that's helped. If you've got any questions, just pop them in the comments. See you next time.